and welcome to a special MSR showdown. I am one of the league users. I'm DK. Uh, I got uh, Kylo in here uh, producing, making sure we sounding and uh, looking good, as Timbo would say. And we have uh, a special, special guest in the building. Uh, we have the Madden NFL producer, Clint Oldenburgs. Say hello for the fellas, Clint. Hey, how's everyone doing? Thrilled to be yeah. here. Awesome. So good to have you, Clint. Uh, thank you for being on. We really appreciate it. You know, people love to hear from the source sometimes. So it's good to have you in here. Yeah, like I told you before we started, I know that you guys are loyal, passionate Madden players, and I, I really like spending time with, with, with you all, you know, every single year. Thank you very much, man. So let's go ahead and get to it because we know that you uh, you got your kids, your family, and you, you work a lot. We know this. <laughs> So uh, let me go ahead and get into the questions. So uh, last time we talked about your career, you know, being in the NFL, being in college, just kind of how things uh, went for you throughout your playing career. And uh, now you're the uh, Madden NFL producer. Uh, just kind of want to talk about, you know, how you got, you know, into uh, EA, you know, and uh, how you became the Madden producer. What was your ride through the ranks uh, uh, becoming the uh, producer? Um, well, I started as an intern uh, way back in 2012 on the college football game that we made at the time. Um, I was a design intern, and uh, that was a program that they had set up at the time for former college athletes. And even though I was also a former NFL athlete, I went ahead and uh, applied for that role anyways, because like you guys, I always was a big time player of Madden, college football, any other football game I could get my hands on really passionate about it and something I was really interested in doing after my football career was over. Um, unfortunately, my football career ended a little bit sooner than I than I had wanted. You know, I, I got, you know, four and a half years in pro football, wanted to play 10, like we all do, didn't happen for me. Um, but I was extremely fortunate to come across this internship and I just built from there on a, on a work ethic and the ability to, you know, get the team together and communicate effectively and those those types of things, I think, were a benefit um, to getting converted to a full-time employee. So, I've always wondered this. Uh, what was your major in college? Like, do you have any background with uh, doing anything that you're doing now? Not directly. I majored in technical journalism. Um, that actually helped me a lot, though, as a designer because there's a lot of technical and... Uh, complex designs that you have to write as a designer and so my background in college my degree in college and technical journalism really helped me onboard quickly to writing those feature designs as a designer but to answer your question directly i did not have any previous video game development experience before uh before coming on the team oh that's that's very interesting because you know for some of us, you know, we go to college for something, we're not able to do anything with it. Like, I have a broadcasting journalism degree, and I am a nurse recruiter now. So, you know, it's good to hear that, you know, a little bit of the college work you did uh, paid off. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely beneficial for me. I went, you know, I, I graduated from Colorado State University. Um, so I give, give that university a lot of credit for kind of getting me ready for being a designer. So with great power comes great responsibilities. So talk about the pressure, if any, there is uh, being the producer of a game such as Madden. Uh, that's an interesting question. I, I never, you know, maybe because I'm an athlete, I, I never really thought about pressure. Sorry if you can hear my son in the background, but pressure is, pressure bursts pipes. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, impact humans. Um, so it's never been a thing I've thought about much. Really, if, if pressure is a real thing, it just comes from the expectations of our players, players like you who want the greatest football game of all time every year, which is exactly the same thing we want. And, and we put probably self-inflicted pressure because we want to deliver it so badly. So what drives you to continue to put as much time, effort, and work in, into the game? I mean, you played you know, in the NFL. You played Madden. But what, what gives you that motivation? Because, I mean, we all know that they come after you sometimes on Twitter, and I know you got to take a lot in, you know, and for some people, you know, they're not able to handle that. So just kind of talk about just, you know, the drive that you have and giving us, you know, what we want with this game. I just really love the game, and I love the players, and as much criticism as, as I may or may not receive at any given time on social media, um, having one person in the grocery store tell, tell you how much they or their kids love the game 
makes it worth it for me. I remember um, I went to a wedding in South Dakota um, last winter, and there's a town there. It's Deadwood, South Dakota, and it's like this little kind of gambling town where you play blackjack and stuff. And I sat at a table with my wife, and there was the dealer there found out that I worked on Madden. And he ended up telling me his entire life story, which really revolved around Madden and how much he loves Madden, and how much it got him out of a really dark place in his life. I actually am still in contact with that gentleman from South Dakota. And hearing stories like that make it impactful that we're actually having an impact on people's lives through a video game. That's that's really, really dope. And when you're back in South Dakota, I'm in Omaha, Nebraska, so make sure we link up. <laughs> Oh, man. So with the passing of John Madden, uh, was there a lot of uh, pressure to deliver a great game this cycle? Uh, really what we wanted to focus on, what we wanted to focus on the most was really respectfully honoring Coach in the way that he deserves. I had a, I had a long-time relationship with Coach since I started working on this game, and his passing uh, was a real hard deal for us. Um, certainly those of us who knew him personally, but the whole team was really impacted. And we just wanted to put everything we could into honoring him the best that we could all throughout our game, whether that's direct with having coach in the game and the legacy game as the first experience, all the way down to the gameplay. You know, uh, fundamentals of gameplay, and fundamentals of football were really important to coach. And that was kind of our guiding light this year for the features that we went after. All right, so enough about that. Let's get into some of the gameplay questions. So what's the one thing you wanted in the game that didn't make it in? I really tried to get a ratings adjuster on the sideline during gameplay as a sideline character. I didn't get that done. <laughs> oh, seriously, that's it? Yeah, man. Other than that, the other answer that I have for you, um, refs. I know that uh, simulation-minded players like you guys want refs back on the field during gameplay. Uh, we feel no different. We want refs on the field during gameplay. We just weren't able to uh, get that in this year. Um, so that's the other one I give you. Uh, what was the one thing uh, in the game that you got in that you really did want? I was really excited. I mean, this may sound like the easy answer, but skill-based passing – uh, from the moment that it was put on paper, um, we all were really excited about it. And I think why that has a little bit of a special place for me is because we had so many members of the team involved in building that feature. It was truly a collaborative effort. Everybody on the gameplay team and even, you know, our UI team who deals with, you know, visual indicators and stuff like that. Everybody contributed all year long to make that a really great feature. And uh, we're pretty happy with the way it turned out. Yeah, I got to admit, I, I really do enjoy a skill-based passing. It really gives you an opportunity to really spread the ball, you know, across the field and put the ball where you want it. Uh, do you think moving forward that that's going to become the norm and people will stop using the classic passing? Do you think in these uh, money games and these tournament games, like all the uh, pros will uh, be using the skill-based passing moving forward? Uh, that's certainly a vision that we have for it, but like everything, we want to see how users – use the use the feature how they react to the feature take feedback most of all from players on more things they want to see and continue evolving it um i think a perfect place for us is probably having a number of different passing settings uh that players can pick between um but for skill-based passing i think it does have a future in our game and i think as more and more people get used to it and can see what it is able to unlock for them i think you'll see even more people using it than are using it now so can we expect moving forward uh, any more uh, updates in uh, CFM, any future updates? Uh, we, I know you don't work on CFM, but a lot of the guys uh, that are watching and that are in the chat, you know, want to hear some things about CFM. So, um, you know, will there be any, anything we can be looking forward to moving forward? And there's nothing from a feature level that I can speak to, but, I mean, we, we live in the age of the Internet, and, and uh, we're a continuous development team, and so – We've evolved as have the rest of the industry. We drop title updates on a pretty regular basis. That's not going to change this year. Those title updates are going to include improvements to every area of our game. And what's really important about those title updates is in the past, if you notice I'm calling them title updates, in the past they've been referred to as patches. I never really liked that term because patches indicate that something's broken and something needs to be fixed. And in some cases that is true. But our goal with title updates is to get fresh content into the game 
uh, fresh tuning into the game to keep the, the gameplay meta um, solid and balanced. And so those th those are really like updates to the game, add-ons to the game experience more so than just a common patch. And that's that's still very much what we're going to do uh, this year. I mean, us being CFM guys, I mean, we like the, the whole weather effect. Uh, has there been talks about adding dynamic weather or even weather changes during the game uh, moving forward in the future? Totally. We talk about that all the time. There's a number of, of us on the dev team uh, who really want to pay that off as well. Um, in terms of when we will be able to do that, I, I don't know. I can't answer that today. Um, what I can tell you is this is a little, a little bit more costly than any of us would hope. So it takes a lot of planning and a lot of setup, uh, but very much something that we want in the game as much as y'all do. I mean, are there any tips that you would have for like us as a CMF, CFM community and all the rest of them like us uh, to grow within uh, the Madden community? Uh, how can we get more involved? How can we work more with the EA if that's possible? Uh, in terms of growth, like one thing, one thing I notice is not just the Madden community, but all gaming communities. There's kind of this culture of, I don't know, like people like dunking on other people <laughs> on social media. <laughs> and it, believe it or not, like there are players out there that are scared to play with other players because they don't know what the experience is going to be like. So, you know, uh, building a culture of positivity and support within the Madden community in my opinion, is a great way to grow any part of the game, whether you're a competitive player, franchise player, yard player, whatever it is. We be more welcoming to other players and provide great experiences so that more people want to play socially. Uh, that, that's that's really my answer to that question. All right, so I'm getting bombarded with this, so I might as well go ahead and get it out the way. Uh, everybody wants to know about the, uh, the patch for the 32-man league. Uh, as I said before, you're not uh, in the CFM development team. Uh, you're with Face of the Franchise and Gameplay. Uh, but uh, if you have anything to say to the community that are waiting to start their 32-man leagues, uh, what would it be? Yeah, totally. I was expecting that question. It's, it's a fair question. So, um, like you said, I don't have direct knowledge of the details because I am not on the franchise team. But what I can say is... That team is aware of the issues. They are working around the clock to get them addressed as quickly as possible. And as soon as there is an update to share, the franchise team will go through Madden NFL Direct to share those details. Um, and I know that probably doesn't help the frustration of the multi-user franchise leagues, but hopefully um, it at least makes you sleep a little better at night knowing that all the issues are aware and being worked on. So, historic teams. We got a little bit of taste of it uh, in the beginning of uh, playing this Madden, you know, with the historic teams. Will we ever get something permanently to where we can go play with historic teams or maybe use some of the historic playbooks? Uh, I'm, not, I, I'm not sure. It's not, it's not currently on our roadmap. It's not in our plans right now. Who knows when or if that'll change. Um, I guess that, that's the answer. Not, not, not at the moment. Okay. Um, what was the hardest adjustment from making the game on current gen, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and moving over to PS5 and the uh, Xbox X? What was the hardest adjustment for that? They're all hard. Um, <laughs> from, a, from a production standpoint, it's really like making two games at this point because the, diver the way that they've diverged so much. Um, and you have to really keep track of what features you can put on Gen 4 and which ones you can't due to memory constraints or technology. Um, and they've diverged so much at this, t at this point that I guess that's the hardest part is it's like making two completely different games um, with the same, same staff. So it's a balancing act. Now, I got to say this because I've been playing uh, the game for, 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 for quite a some time and uh hold on one second i'm sorry my kid just grabbed me kylo if you have a question uh real quick my kid just grabbed my attention real quick I'll yeah sure um actually give me one second here if you had to pick one team in cfm to, to use like if you're in a 32 man league you know fandom aside uh what team would you pick just based on what you think would be like the most fun to play with, to develop, 
um, in a 32-man franchise? I love that question. Um, I'm going to play my franchise with the Broncos. Uh, and that's not my favorite team, so it's not a fandom thing. I'm a big fan of Javante Williams, and I think that he's a, a really good running back in Madden, and I really enjoy using him, especially with all of the, the new ball carrier cuts that we put in and the hit everything features and the tackle battles. I really like Javante Williams, and I always lean it in franchise. I like to get a team with a good quarterback but who's aging so that I'm going to have the opportunity to make some quarterback decisions along my path as that franchise coach. So um, Broncos for me. Um, so I'm sorry, I'll go back to my question real quick. So like I said, I've been playing Madden for quite some time. And usually whenever we get the game, you know, there's a day one patch. Uh, we haven't seen a patch yet. Should we ex be expecting uh, a patch anytime soon or the game is what the game is? And so far, I mean, I, I, I'm pretty sure a lot of people agree with me. They're really enjoying the game. So uh, what do you got to say to that? There's still going to be title updates, like I said before. Excuse me, um, no patch, title update. <laughs> And there, there's still we still have title updates in the can in terms of the exact dates it's really hard for me to commit to them and the only reason i can't commit to them is because i know from experience those dates can change so i don't want to throw out a date and then have the date change and then have everyone yell at me because i said a thing that wasn't true so i can't say dates title updates are going to be a big part of our continued continuous development strategy um so you will see them this year to your question about the launch day patch we got a lot of really great feedback from the beta. We made a few tuning updates to that build in the beta, but we really didn't want to um, put out a game that was drastically different than what players said they re were really enjoying from that public closed beta that we had. All right, this will be my last question, and I will let people in the chat ask a couple questions. We'll get a couple in because uh, we know that you got to go do your thing, and I'll let uh, Kylo kind of take over that uh, part. But I just want to ask you... Uh, uh, one last question. If you could trade, so you're playing with your franchise with the Broncos. So, one, is it going to be on or offline? And two, if you can trade for any player, who would you trade for? Uh, it's online. So one of, the, one of the fun things we have going on here over the last few years is a bunch of producers and designers on the Madden team get together and play a multi-league franchise all through the season. And we talk to each other about the league and our – um, apps at work that we used to communicate. So it'll be an online league. Um, the player that I'll probably try to trade for um, is Debo Samuel. Um, just a, probably from a place of fandom, but I really, really like watching Debo Samuel play football. I think he's a great football player. He was a critical member of my all of my fantasy football teams <laughs> last year. Um, and I like to get creative with ways to use him. And if I have to, if I'm able to trade for Debo Samuel, maybe I will also use the 49ers playbook with the Broncos so I can get some of that Debo Samuel package uh, in Denver if I'm able to acquire him. Go ahead, Kyle, if you want to ask a couple questions. And uh, chat, if you got questions, put them in there. Uh, chat, uh, questions that are suitable to ask. Plant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's a good one right off the bat. This is from Pain Train. Uh, what is the most challenging aspect about trying to accept fan feedback at launch? Um, it's an interesting question. I think there's a lot. I think number one is making sure that you have a good filter because there's a reason that they're giving feedback. And even though it may not be extra apparent at face value, you got to dig through it and figure out exactly what they're trying to tell you so you can improve their experience. I think the other thing is um, in today today's day and age of social media, which is it is what it is, it's no one's fault. It's just kind of difficult to have a nuanced conversation with, with context, having a place at the table. So some things that may seem very simple or obvious or trivial to someone may not be that to the other person. It's hard to have that conversation. Um, so I think those are some of the challenges uh, with that feedback loop. But all of that is to say we love getting all the feedback. It definitely helps us make a better product. I want to encourage everyone to continue giving us the feedback every opportunity that you get. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so another question about actually uh, face of the franchise. Um, in past Madden, and you know, we had the superstar mode you know, way back in the day in Madden 06, 07, things like that. Um, the design of that is somewhat similar to face of the franchise, but not exactly. Is there any plans uh, to have it go back to more of that uh, classic style superstar mode, or is it kind of more geared towards a uh, story face of the franchise for the near future? 
definitely things that we talk about all the time. I can't divulge any future creative plans at this time. Um, basically, I'll just say we know that there's a lot of players out there who love Superstar, and it's something that we talk about pretty frequently. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I think I think we're good with the, with the chat questions now. Thank you, Clint. Yeah, no problem. Oh, well, that's all I got, Clint. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, maybe we can link back up midway through the uh, Madden cycle and kind of see where things went from here uh, until uh, then. And, uh, yeah, we can definitely get you back on. Uh, we really appreciate you coming on. Love having you. Love the game, man. And, uh, I mean, nothing in life is going to ever be perfect, and I totally understand that. But uh, it's, I feel like it's definitely been an upgrade from uh, last year to this year. So we appreciate all the work that you guys and all you devs do put in. And uh, if I have any uh, CFM questions, uh, who do I need to be uh, uh, hitting up on Twitter in, in their DMs? <laughs> I mean, by all means, feel free at any time to hit up Madden NFL Direct. And, and even if you don't get a direct response, it doesn't mean that, that NFL Direct or Madden NFL Direct did not get the feedback and hasn't done their due diligence to follow up with the dev team. Um, so that's the most direct way, but by all means, if you want to reach out to me with your franchise feedback, I won't be able to give you an answer on the spot, but I can certainly pass it along. Uh, thank you very much. You got anything else, Kylo? No, that's it. Thank you. Appreciate you, Clint, man. You have yourself a blessed day, man, and uh, we'll be chatting soon, man. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, thanks, guys. I appreciate you spending some time with me. Appreciate everybody joining in on this special episode of uh, MSR uh, Showdown. Uh, We'll be getting back uh, on this live here soon with some of the uh, live gameplays. Uh, make sure you guys uh, tune in to all the stuff that we have. And, yeah, appreciate everybody joining in. And y'all stay blessed. And we'll catch you later.